Hi, today I wanted to share a happy email that I received the other day. Every now and then I get stuff like this, and it really kind of reminds me why uh, we, we put the effort in to do what we do and put make the videos we make and try to get people involved in repair. This is the stuff that's fun, exciting, and interesting. It says, Hi, Lewis. I thought I would give you a bit more history on my field sprayer ECU repair journey and how you helped. A modern farm chemical sprayer has a crazy amount of automation. There is a bank of ECUs on the side of the machine that controls guidance, steering, mixing, application control, height, as well as basic machine function like engine, drive line, and a body control module for the cab. The boom height is automatic, so the spray nozzles form the correct pattern and each plant or weed gets the right amount of chemical, similar to holding a spray paint can the correct distance away from a surface, but at 18 miles an hour in a field, you need a computer to adjust the distance fast enough. It uses a system of ultrasonic sensors and hydraulic control valves. A wire in the harness was finding ground and abused the PTC thermistor, causing the system to malfunction and to frequently run the boom too high, leading to me to pay a neighbor for overspray damages. My machine is a Rogator and was built by Agco in Minnesota. The dealer was helpful in supplying wiring diagrams and pinouts I needed to find the, the ground. John Deere is not helpful at all in comparison but the ECU is listed as a single component for $4,100. I opted to look into fixing it first. My search for electronic repair videos online led to you by way of YouTube's algorithm, probably because I'm a big AVE fan, good taste, as what I do in maintenance and repair overlaps him a great deal, and the two of you share many followers. After watching your videos, I realized that my problem might be a simple fix. Big Clive, shout out to Big Clive, helped with the component identification because I didn't know what the bird component was when I opened the ECU case and I ordered it from DigiKey. I enlisted the help of an experienced TV repair shop to do the actual soldering because I wasn't about to teach myself surface mount soldering on a $4,000 board dipped in conformal coating. The entire process was shared online with my 2,500 farmer Twitter followers with the hope of inspiring more repair. Now I am getting calls from a CBC reporter wanting to follow up on right to repair after your interview. Awesome. Being unprepared for the right to repair discussion, I went back to watch more of your videos and realized that I had a pretty good in my first board repair effort. The dealer and even the actual manufacturer of the ECU board told me to go ahead and try to repair it. I sent the CBC reporter woman on to another person having bigger problems. However, after being informed about the right to repair issue by yourself and Jessa, I started having the discussion with my pr uh, provin provincial leader. Ugh provincial legislators about writing better consumer protection laws that include right to repair. The province of Saskatchewan is 1.1 million people over an area about the size of Texas. Dealerships of anything are few and far between here. We have no Apple store. The idea of empowering small businesses providing local repair has gained traction with our politicians. Our politicians are generally very accessible and responsive due to the small population and are limited on what they can receive from corporate donations. I think we can make progress here, so I will continue my fight in my little corner of the world. Best of luck with the new store. I can't get contractors to take my money and do work either. I thought it was just a small town problem. You have proven my theory to be totally wrong, Joe W. Thank you very much. And again, this is, this is the thing that I talked about in a lot of my older videos, which is that one of the things I wanted to teach people, and I talked about this in my 1 million subscriber video, is one of the people that wanted to buy my business for pennies in the dollar, and when he couldn't, kind of imply that bad things would wind up happening in, in terms of you know getting reported for this, that, and the other, said, you know, you can't change the world through computer repair. And one of the things that I've said is that if you are able to clean up your own little section of the world, just take your, whatever it is you do, even if you're just a janitor somewhere, make your own section of the world a little bit better. Find out what's being done incompetently, find out what's being done lackadaisically, and do it a little bit better, that you can actually create change. And this is awesome, because that's exactly what Joe is doing here. When he said that I will continue to fight in my own little corner of the world, he fixed what looked like a very expensive machine that would, would have caused serious damages in the, um, the farming process. And he showed 2,400 other people or so, 2,500 people, that it is doable. People from CBC are taking note. Maybe other farmers are going to take note of this and realize that they can save a lot of money and make things work again as well. So thank you very much for sharing this story, and thank you for taking part in the craft that I do enjoy. That's it for today, and as always, I hope you learned something.